Ms. Milano, thank you so much for making time to speak with me. I know this is a busy time for you, especially as we speak. We're just a few days away from what I like to call the summer music event in the heart of Toronto. Chevy Music presents Indie Fridays at Young Dundas Square. You're one of the big performers as we speak coming up this Friday. How does it feel being part of something that has really become a music staple point in the city? It's really exciting, and I'm I'm very honored to be a part of it. You know, when, when I, I was reading up on some of your stuff, I was listening to some of the music. You really do have an understanding of, uh, you know, MTV uses the term the real world. You understand that. How have you been able to incorporate it into your music, whereas, the, whereas at one point, you know, people are enjoying the beats and the sounds, but the other side of it, you have a really strong message to get out there to talk about, as I like to call again, the real world. I guess it just comes naturally. It's not something that I really um, think about too hard. I think it's so ingrained in my personality that it just naturally finds its way out into my art. And I was going to say, have you always been that type of a person? And, and when I say that type of person, I mean art, because that's something when it's ingrained in you, um, it's almost like it's a need. You have to do this. Yes, I have always been an artist since I was very, very small. Well, let's talk about that. And let's get into it. Uh, originally, where you're from and the love of hip hop. And where did that all come from? Um, I'm from Edmonton, Alberta. Originally, I moved to Toronto three and a half years ago. Um, my mom has always loved hip hop and dance hall and reggae. So I grew up listening to a lot of it um, from all over the spectrum. And so I suppose it came from there. I mean, I guess I, I w didn't really get into it myself until I was a teenager, just because it seemed like her music. But um, I do have, like, a very large appreciation for it and the culture. Who was uh, your mom listening to? Do you remember? And was there anybody that uh, sort of influenced you? Uh, she listened to a lot of, like, Prince. I know that's not hip-hop, but that's one of her favorites is Prince. She's listening to a lot of, like, The Roots and Erica Batu and Common and stuff like that, a lot of Talib Kweli and, um, and most deaf and that whole scene. But she, on the flip side, she also really liked Three Six Mafia, a couple of their songs, like Young Buck and City Scent and, um, and all that kind of stuff, too. Now, it's kind of funny because, as I said earlier about the real world, the beats uh, versus, of course, you know, the lyrics of what's really going on, those artists that you just mentioned – they do a lot of that. Do you think that influence kind of comes from them? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it does, and I'm sure it uh, it it's ingrained in me to uh, be political in my music and to talk about political things with my music because of that. What was the Edmonton uh, music scene like? Um, I mean, it's uh, it's very DIY. I mean, Edmonton is the festival capital of Canada there's more festivals there than anywhere else in the country and a lot of that has to do with people in the community putting together festivals constantly so it's um it's very community oriented but there just isn't a huge population so there isn't a lot going on so when did you start writing lyrics yourself and what were you starting to focus on in the beginning towards to what you focus on now I mean, um, I, I wrote my first song when I was six years old, and I guess it started out as just, like, regular old pop music and, like, love song kind of stuff, like the kind of stuff that I was hearing on the radio, which was what I was listening to when I was that young. But um, I guess as it's evolved and as a, my worldview has expanded, so have my lyrics and my lyrical content. When you talk about expanding, can you go specifically on one of the things that you you enjoy talking about through your music? I mean, I like talking about um, self-empowerment a lot, but I also like to uh, talk about the issues that I care about. Like uh, I'll mention here and there the environment or um, police brutality, racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, um, stuff like that. What was um, 
when you started getting your music out and performing, uh, what was the reaction from the crowd? It's uh, I've always had like a good reaction from the crowd. People have always gotten excited about it, which I'm very thankful for. Have you ever worked with anybody else? Meaning, of course, like, have you ever been like in a group, duo, or whatever? You've always been the single artist. Um, I was in a rap group years ago, but that was very brief. It only lasted about six months. What do you think it is that, you know, that I don't know if I used the term correctly, I need to be on your own. Is that the only way to get that message out, do you feel? Um, I don't think so. Like, I'm starting now to collaborate more with other artists. I think it was oh, wow. mostly just about uh, finding my own voice and mm-hmm. understanding what that meant for me. And it's kind of hard when you got other people around, too, with uh, different ideas also. Sure, yeah. You said that you just moved, you moved to uh, Toronto three years ago. Why the move? Was it for the career? Um, I always wanted to live in Toronto when I was living in Edmonton. I knew it was really the only place in Canada that I could move that had like a thriving music community where I could um, hone my craft and kind of grow as an artist. But I moved on a whim because I had some money saved up and I had just quit my job. And my friend had been uh, working away at me for about six months trying to get me to move out. So I did. How has the move been for you personally and uh, for your career, too? Um, It's been pretty good. There's been some ups and downs, obviously, um, as with anything. But uh, overwhelmingly, it's been very very eye-opening and great for my career so far. Musically, as we talked about, too, have you been able in the last three and a half, uh, three years, uh, what kind of songs have you been writing and what singles can we hear right now? Um, I've been writing a lot of uh, like like uh, personal songs, some semi-political stuff. I, I go all over the place, all over the board as far as my lyrical content goes, but um, just put out a couple, like a party single called Milkshake, which you can listen to on SoundCloud, and one of the more popular ones is called Kim Possible, and that's about um, love and romance. Mm, looking forward to hearing that on stage and I'm assuming you're going to be performing those songs too um, I'm actually DJing for 45 minutes ah fantastic I wasn't sure if you're going to be doing both or not so when yeah. did you get into when did you get into the DJ um, I started DJing 6 years ago so I was 18 years old um, yeah I started doing that. I mean, I think I've always kind of been a DJ because it started with like uh, making mix CDs and making mixes for friends and for crushes and stuff and uh, and taking my mixes to like my daycare when I was really small and stuff. But um, I started taking DJing seriously when I was 18. What has that done for you being able to be an artist? Well, being a DJ is being an artist, but I mean... Being able to be on the microphone and on, you know, in the back scene like that too. How do you think that made a difference in your career? Um, I think it just makes me more dynamic as an artist. Um, yeah, that's basically it. So then, what can we expect then when you're performing at uh, Chevy Music Indie Fridays spinning? What is it going to be like? Can expect just a lot of. Uh, a lot of good vibes and a lot of high energy and um, expect to dance. Oh, there'll be a lot of dancing. I'm just curious. Is there going to be a mix of old school and new school maybe? And will we be able to hear, will you be mixing in any of your music? I think I'm going to be mostly playing modern house music. Probably won't be mixing in any of my own. Uh, Well, if we want to hear your own or anything else you're doing, social media is the place to go. Where do we go to follow you? You can follow me at Miss Milano. That's M Y S T M I L A N O. That's on all platforms, my handle. So looking forward to seeing you. So looking forward to hearing the music. I get to introduce you, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm just looking so forward to having Young Dundas Square, the biggest dance party in the city, and you're going to be a big part of that. Thank you so much for doing this interview with me, and looking forward to seeing you on Friday. Thank you.